you're listening to Prep Period, the only podcast for teachers that's focused on quick wins and actionable tips that can be implemented in your classroom tomorrow. Prep Period starts in three, two, one. Welcome to the Prep Period Podcast. My name is Brian Bean. I'm going to be your host as usual. Uh, And in today's episode, we have Joel Chrysler from Sauk Prairie High School, uh, an award-winning, phenomenal uh, personal finance teacher. He's going to share a number of different things that he has developed, uh, some techniques and, and programs that he's created there that have a lot of applications not just in personal finance, but really any teacher, but particularly some of your business marketing finance teachers could use. You guys are going to love it. Uh, so with that, welcome, Joel. Hi, Brian. Thanks a lot for having me. I really appreciate it. Oh, it's my pleasure. Glad to have you here. So before we dive in, kind of first things first, let's let our, our listeners get more familiar with you. So uh, Joel Chrysler has taught for 31 years at Sock Prairie High School in uh, Prairie du- is it Prairie Dusac? Prairie du Sac. Did I say that right? Prairie du Sac, Wisconsin. Uh, he's an advisory member of the Wisconsin Governor's Council on Financial Literacy, an 11 time attendee of the uh, Jumpstart National Educators Conference, um, and the Next Gen Personal Finance Fellow, and an award winning advocate for financial literacy. Uh, so, in other words, you know a thing or two about personal finance education. I wish you were a little bit more qualified. Oh, all right. Let's we'll see uh, what I can do next time. Yeah. yeah. Um, And then he also serves as a consultant for the uh, 2021 Jumpstart National Educators Conference. So uh, basically, we have got the personal finance education guru. And I am ecstatic because, as you know, my background is also in personal finance education. So every once in a while, I get a personal finance guy uh, or, or gal on the show. And it just it's like Christmas for me. I just love it. So much fun. So thank you very much for, for doing that. Uh, real quick, uh, if I understand correctly, you are, you're working with Jumpstart for their conference this year. What is it? How did you get involved with them? They're one of my favorite organizations. Yeah, Jumpstart is, has been a, just a great family for me. I mean, I really look at them as family. Um, I went and attended the very first educators conference um, back in 2009. Um, I was sponsored by my local bank. They paid for everything and I went and um, through people that I met there, um, I got to know Laura, the CEO. I got to know Dan Hebert very well. And every year, this bank was ready to, to support me each and every year to go to it. And so I just became part of the family. And when they uh, had uh, my good friend Bill Cheeks step down this last year um, as a member of, of Jumpstart, they said, you know, Joel, would you ever consider something like this? And I said, well, I'm not done with teaching yet, but I would love to be part of anything that I can do for Jumpstart. And they said, well, we'd really like you to help us with the next conference because this one's going to have to be different because we had to take last year off. So they brought me on. Well, that's awesome. So Dan's one of my favorite people in the world. And every time we talk, he kind of jokes around that this conference is going to be a big hit unless he has a stroke in the process of, <laughs> of, of pulling that off. So thank you for saving Dan's life and helping him out so that he doesn't have a stroke. Now, I have never met anybody more dedicated to something than Dan Hebert. Oh, he just is an incredible guy. Yeah, for, for people who don't know Dan, they're just missing out. They're just, they, they got the short stick in life and they didn't get to know Dan. That's all I'm right. saying. Uh, well, that's wonderful. Uh, and then you work with Next Gen Personal Finance. What does it mean to be an NGPF fellow? Yeah, back in 2018, um, Tim Ranzetta and his staff invited, there were 12 of us with that cohort. There have been, I, I want to say, four, maybe five cohorts of 12 teachers that were invited to go to Palo Alto to go to their offices, get some pretty extensive training in the resources of Next Gen, and then that qualified you to be a fellow. And so for them, I have done um, some, some teacher PDs, some, some virtual professional development as well. Um, in 2019, I got to go to Little Rock, Arkansas, and Anaheim, California, and even here in close by in Madison, Wisconsin, to teach teachers. And so it's just a great opportunity and, again, another just phenomenal organization. Oh, yeah. Tim's fantastic. I've gotten to know him a little bit. I was on his podcast a couple times. Uh, yeah. Just a – man, that guy – He's a good man, too. There's a lot of really good people, and you get involved in the personal finance education community. And it's it, the, the thing I've noticed the most is that everybody is all about just 
helping educators improve what they're doing in this specific there's like no competition whatsoever no uh, and, and i think that was the the best part of that first jumpstart conference because very shortly after that i got to meet tim as well but i was looking for resources yeah because i didn't want a textbook anymore i didn't think that that was going to be effective and then pretty soon you've got all sorts of different resources and and a lot of the stuff is free and then when tim came and made his program free it it changed my classroom it really did yeah yeah, I love his stacks game. I'll, sometimes I'll just play stacks on my own because I figured out, right? I shouldn't say this on air, but I figured out how to like game the system on stacks and I know what to do. And then just like, it's addictive. I love it. Uh, well, wonderful. I, I, like I said, it's so fun to have, you know, another financial literacy advocate uh, and kind of champion on the show. So I love that now. Uh, but let's talk about some of the specific things you've done in your classroom. I, uh, if I understand correctly, you've done just some amazing things, some award-winning things uh, in your career, both inside your classroom, but also things that have kind of, you know, had a, a broader impact. So let's start with you developed a, a peer-to-peer kind of program, right, to, to help uh, high school kids teach elementary school kids, if I understand correctly. So let, let's hear a little bit more about that. Sure. Yeah, this was actually after the very first conference that I went to. I, I was motivated by some of the elementary teachers that they just they they wanted more. You know, they wanted an opportunity to teach financial literacy, and I thought, you know, my students are coming away saying, "Oh, this is just such a great class. I really enjoyed this." And I thought, well, why not let my kids go into the elementary classrooms and share some lessons? I I enjoyed doing that when I was a high school student, and so. We formulated or formulated the program, and we just we did some very basic lessons on oh on savings accounts and on making choices and opportunity costs and just some very simple lessons and formulated the lessons. The students would go into the classroom and present it. Um, the teachers in my so district. So real quick, what what age level are they going to? They're not going to kindergartners, are I'm assuming. But... We we did first. Uh, typically, I would go like first and fourth graders for a semester, and then I would go second graders and third graders for another semester. So really, you I, would start I, all the way down first graders. Yeah, and that's, that's awesome. you know again the basic choices, and that was yeah. really the first lesson that that they would learn, and um, the the kids loved it, and the lessons were important, but just the the feeling that my students got for giving back and be able to go back and see their elementary teacher, see their buildings, see how little the desks were. I mean, just little things like that. And then it just had a huge, huge impact. And so that's what I've, I've tried to do. Of course, last spring and this year, I haven't been able to do it, but we're looking forward to, um, again, doing it again next year. Yeah. Uh, and I would imagine that you know, every educator knows this, that you learn the subject matter so much more and so much at a, at a different level if you're the one teaching it to other people. So giving your own students that opportunity to go down and, and take that content information that they know at a certain level and synthesize it down to a, to a little bit lower level so that somebody can understand it at a different place uh, was probably significantly uh, more, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to downplay what you did in the classroom, but I'm guessing that that experience alone had an even bigger impact on their understanding and internalization of the concepts than anything we did in the classroom. Right. And what I, what I really loved too was as soon as, you know, we'd been doing it for several years and then pretty soon some of those early students that we had taught to in the elementary schools were now my students. And they kept asking, when are we going to get to do this? When are we going to get to do it? And they, wow. they wanted to be a part of it as well. That's and awesome. so that was, it's, 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 it's kind of a nice thing to, to see kind of come around. Um, and like I said, this, this year was really tough to sit back and not be able to do it was really, really hard. Um, but again, I know I'm going to have some great students next year that are looking forward to it. Um, uh, I wish, I'm surprised we didn't try to find a way to, to still facilitate that virtually, but with COVID, man, it just threw everybody's mm -hmm. off, everybody off. Right. And my, my thing with it was the fact that we were, you know, literally uh, in my school, for example, we probably had five, if not six different schedules over the course of this last year. And so I thought for an elementary teacher for me to say, hey, can yeah. I take up some of your time? I just I thought, you know what, everybody's under a lot of stress. I'm going to back off for this year. And uh, when, when someone did ask me about it, I said, please know it's coming back. Yeah. Uh, I'm, and I'm just thinking about moving forward, even for teachers that are still doing some distance learning, mm -hmm. that would be a really cool activity that they could provide for elementary school kids. Um, and I think that that, it, that that translates into lots of different subjects, any subject. 
you could have your your students go and teach you know basic business concepts or basic whatever it is that you teach to the you know younger kids and it'd give that elementary school teacher something fun to do kind of thing I love the idea love it I also love the fact that you had elementary school kids that participated in the program that now got to your school and then remembered that because it made an impact on them they remembered it now they want to do it also that means you've been teaching for a really long time <laughs> which I always yeah. hated whenever that happened we were in like I, you know, teach somebody, not obviously that specific thing, but like different examples when you teach a student and then you see that student grow up. And then, you know, like I had some coworkers that I had once taught before and I just like, man, I've been, I've been doing this way too long. It's, it's kind of like in, in the classroom now when I have former, or I have students of former students, I yeah. mean, children of former students, and I look at them and go, oh yeah, now I get it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Or when they have kids, that's like the worst. Like I never want to be introduced to one of my students' kids because then that just that, that's the nail in the coffin to my youth right there. Um, now uh, I understand also that you did that you've done some cool things uh, that you could kind of incorporate businesses, local businesses. So not just farming your kids out to the elementary school, but you've brought in other businesses and, and allowed them to take part of the education. So tell us about that program. Now, we, we have an outstanding executive director of our local chamber of commerce, and her name is Tawana German. And she and I were neighbors for a little bit, and I had both of her kids in class. And she just has really been a, a very big advocate for our, for our Sauk Prairie community. We, you know, we're a, a really cool small community right on the Wisconsin River, and we have just a lot to offer. And one of the things she would find out from her, from her members was, you know, we really would like to have an impact on students. We would really like to help them learn some of the skills that we're looking for. And so between herself and at the time, my assistant superintendent, Jeff Wright, who is now our superintendent, um, formulated this program called the Sauk Prairie Economic Empowerment Project. And what we did was we got a hold of some of the young business, well, for the most part, young business leaders. We had some other established business leaders as well and put together just a little initially three day, then turned it into a two day curriculum where they would come in and, and talk about different things with my students. So the very first thing we talked about were first impressions. And so the way that we set this up was Tawana pretended that she was looking for a representative to work in the chamber. And so there was a video that was created with some good first impressions of people coming in asking about the job and some bad ones. And it created a dialogue between the students and those business people sitting in my in my class with them about which ones made good impressions, which ones made poor impressions. Mm. Um, from there, we talked a little bit about, you know, elevator pitches. Now, in my community, we don't have too many elevators, but just that whole <laughs> idea of, of coming into contact with somebody that could help you. And in a community so like you just our, have to change the wording. You just call, exactly. you call this a stairway pitch. Right, right. And, uh, and so we, we worked on those. And so they got comfortable just, you know, sharing a little bit about themselves with these people. And then we took it into um, interview practice and things like that as well. So it was just, it's, it was a great, great couple of days. And I think the, one of the funniest things is on the last day when we do the interviews, Tawana or Jeff would always interview me for this customer service position at the chamber. Well, they call me sometimes Mr. Sock Prairie because I love my community. And so they'd be, I'd be telling them how great the community was and this is what you could do and that was what you could do. Well, just over the last month, they actually interviewed for interns to work there. And I called Twan and I said, I thought I had this job wrapped up already. And you went and gave it to other people. Right? I've interviewed for like a dozen times. What does a man got to do? That's, that's awesome. That's a, well, did so did they shoot you down, or are you going to do a summer internship? I've got a few other things, a few other, uh, yeah, a few other things going on. But well, uh, one of my apparently um, you're not as devoted to your community as you like to let on. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, exactly. Yeah, yeah. One of my good friends' daughter uh, got got the got one of the positions, and some other former students got positions, and it's just it's really going to be a nice thing for for the community. That's awesome. So you hear about people and teachers who are always trying to get you know local business professionals to come in and talk 
uh, you know, a, a lot of junior achievement programs do similar kinds of things. If you wanted to go out and start something like that on your own, if we've got a listener out there who's like, man, I'd like to do that, but you know, I don't know where to start. It sounds like the Chamber of Commerce it would be the way to go. Would that be your recommendation? How would you coach someone into building this program at their own school? Right. I truly would, would talk to, if you have a local Chamber of Commerce, I think that's a great place to start. Um, because, and I think that that's a lot of times where junior achievement will go to first as well about in, kind of introducing themselves and, and then getting introduced to other businesses. So I think that would be a great place to start or if there's some kind of, um, a lot of times we'll, there'll be meetings like um, business leaders after five kind of thing where they get together and they have a, just a meeting um, where they're talking about different things that are going on in the community and just make sure that people know that you are interested in doing something like this. Um, again, a lot of people coming from a small community, I think it's nice because we have a lot of people that stay here. And yeah. so they've had a good experience at, at the school, at the high school, and they're looking for ways to give back. Yeah. And it just makes perfect sense to open that door to do it. You know, I think that a lot of people, I think it's an underutilized resource that maybe people just don't realize that, uh, especially in uh, when you live in a tight-knit community, either a small town or even just a tight community in, in an urban setting, you see those happen quite a bit where people who grew up there, you know, they come back or they stay there. And they want to give back or they want to help contribute to a better education than maybe they got or or pass forward that they got a great education. Now they feel like it's my turn to give. And so I think a lot of the community people want to do that. And it doesn't matter what subject you're teaching. There's going to be a connection to the local community because those people got the education you're giving and now they're in these careers. And so there's always going to be a tie in. Another great episode. In fact, this one was so good. Our interview went so well that we actually split it into two parts. So you just listened to part one of our Joel Chrysler interview. Be sure to come in back next week for part two. Some really good stuff coming down the pipeline for that. You're going to love it. Uh, with that, uh, as usual, if you or anyone you know that you think would be interested or be a great uh, guest for our podcast, please reach out to us at prepperiod at stukent.com or just click the link in the description below. Uh, as usual, hey, thanks for listening. I know you've got a lot of options there. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the Prep Period Podcast on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, really anywhere that you you know get your podcasts and listen. Uh, until then, hey, thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. Thank you.